My name is Adam, and they call me, friend of mine are calling me Adolek Kon, Kayo Hai Chen. And, uh, and I am today 90 years old, but I don't feel like I am strong and I work in a garden and I, I teach people even to how to work on a computer. And, uh, and I'm 90. In Australia, we arrived in 1949. And uh, I think Australia, in my opinion, is the best country in the world. So we were dancing, you know, before the war. We had tangos, foxtrots, and you had to know how to dance. It is, for it is a tango or a waltz was completely different, or a foxtrot. <laughs> I remember this. <laughs> It's my dad's birthday, and uh, he's 90, and that's a big deal. Here's a, here's a little um, picture of my parents who um, just married. They were married in a matter of a few hours. They didn't intend to marry, but they were leaving Poland. And there was one old auntie who survived the war, and she took responsibility of my mother. And she said, you can't leave if you're not married. Young girls like you don't marry, with, don't travel with young boys without getting married. So they said, but we've got, we're leaving tomorrow. The ticket's tomorrow to Russia. I said, if you marry her, then she will go. So what do you mean they marry her? Today is one o'clock. Tomorrow at six o'clock we are leaving. So she said, come in two hours. We're going to do a wedding. <laughs> when I asked my mother how come she agreed to marry my father, she said she felt he was a good man. How did you know he was a good man? And she said because when she came back from work in the evenings, he had kept some food for her. This is me and she wasn't my wife. Yet, September 1945, 60 years later, Turagrot, Melbourne. We were wearing the same boots, the same briefcase. The same brush even what she's wearing here, exactly 60 years later. See? <laughs> the word is destiny. One word, destiny. When we supposed to go to the station, where the carriages were taking you to Auschwitz, that we're going somewhere because they told us that we're going to Germany, we're going to work, we're going to have a very good time there. You know, we're going to get a lot of food, we're going to work over there. But we did not that we are going to Auschwitz. We're going for about how many days? For three or four days from Lodz to Auschwitz. right in front of Auschwitz where the Arbeitsmacht frei we were standing over there and we were not allowed to sit down. And eventually they called us, we went to selection, they selected right, left, right, left, and that was the Dr. Mengele. And that was the time when I have seen the last time my mother but uh, there were also my family and, uh, you know, a lot of people from our family went the same way. For what we, we sold? We sold my mommy's ring for two spoons of flour. Then we, we sold some, a, a, a little watch for one kilo of wood to cook some hot water. And the minute when it came nearly to us, my mother, I, I, she had only this ring. And I told her, Mommy, you are, we are not going to sell it. It is not going to save our, our lives. Her only ring was she loved very much. But the second, when we had been coming in a queue to be selected, she turned this ring off her hand and she gave it to me. In a second, my mother was here, I was here, holding my mother in my hand. Suddenly, this ring became my mother. 
and we went through many selections, cutting our hair here, everywhere, uh, looking if we have something in our teeth or somewhere. Somehow I managed to hide my mother. To hide the ring? It wasn't the ring, it was my mother. There were two SS men in uniform, SS uniform. And they have seen this. They took out the gun and they started to shoot in the hole. They killed all the mothers with the children who wanted to get out, have become quiet in the hole suddenly. Then they have seen on their fields, the mothers and the children are running. They shoot them too. And that was about 20 meters from me. Then he came to the watch house where I was sitting he knocked at the door. He was with somebody else, with another assessment. I had to open the door, and he came straight with the smoking gun right in my forehead. My brother died on the hands of my mother on tuberculosis. I put his body on a wheelbarrow and walked into the cemetery with his body. I wanted him to be buried. And the German SS were shooting, and I was walking with the wheelbarrow and I was walking, I said, whatever is going to happen, they're going to shoot me, they're going to shoot me, I don't care. I'm going to take him to the cemetery. I wonder myself sometime, you know, when I went through, we were dancing, happy, and things like this, and uh, got children, got grandchildren, and everyone is of them very educated, and uh, it's, it is something. If you're dancing uh, for creation of life, you can dance everywhere, even in Auschwitz, because you created life.